Disneyland's Pirates of the Caribbean is one of the park's oldest and most popular attractions. The ride follows the story of a marauding band of pirates ransacking a Caribbean town, doing everything from drinking rum to buying women to shooting off their guns and setting things on fire. You know, all the typical fun stuff. The ride has become extremely iconic since its opening, so much so that it later spawned a series of films based on it. But the story behind the ride starts off with something different. In fact, when the concept was first introduced, it wasn't even a ride at all. By the late 1950s, Walt Disney was looking to expand Disneyland with a new section of the park called the New Orleans Square that was based off 19th century Louisiana. Disney and the Imagineers then began to work on some kind of walkthrough attraction to open alongside the new expansion, allowing it to offer more than just its shops and restaurants, eventually coming up with a pirate-themed walkthrough, since pirates were actually a pretty big part of the real New Orleans' history. The original attraction was intended to be an underground wax museum, located under the square itself, with a replication of a waterside town and various wax figures depicting important moments in pirate mythology. The plans for this concept actually did get finalized, and construction on what would be the underground wax museum did start in 1961, when a large basement was dug out in the middle of the new land. However, Disney's Imagineering department shifted its focus not too long after that, and began working on a few projects for the 1964 World's Fair, where they'd be creating attractions for a couple different companies and organizations. Disney's involvement in the fair pretty much halted all progress on the development of Disneyland, so the walkthrough pirate exhibit was shelved until their work for the fair was over. While they were working on the fair, the Imagineers managed to create and expand upon loads of new technologies, the most noteworthy one being the audio animatronic. As most of you know, it was the development of animatronics that really gave way to a new era of Disney attractions, ones that had a much better sense of storytelling, and did so by having much more immersive scenes. When Disney was finally finished with the fair and work resumed on Disneyland's upcoming expansion, Walt decided not to finish construction on the walkthrough pirate attraction, and instead opted to use that same concept and theming as a way to introduce two of the biggest and newest technologies from the fair into the park. Those two being the boat ride system from It's a Small World and audio animatronic technology from the Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln show. So, with that idea in place, work officially began on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride that we all know today. Some of the earliest elements of the final ride came from the original walkthrough attraction concept, like the waterside town setting and, of course, the pirates, but some of the other parts of the ride did take a little bit of time to get established or decided upon. Much like the Haunted Mansion, most of the ideas for the ride's scenes can be traced back to Imagineer Mark Davis' drawings. His concept art really helped set the overall tone for the attraction, and helped everyone working on it get an idea of how it should turn out in its final form. As a matter of fact, many of these scenes from the finished ride were actually taken directly from his drawings. Over the next couple of months, Davis and the other Imagineers came up with different scene ideas that were then turned into drawings and then either approved or turned down by Walt Disney, who was pretty heavily involved throughout the entirety of the project. Imagineers also utilized storyboards to plan out what order the scenes would go in, similar to the same process they used for making movies. As the ride's development went on and the ideas they had began to grow bigger and bigger, they eventually realized that there wasn't anywhere near enough space in the park for the ride, even if they did put some of it underneath the square itself. So, the solution they came up with was to have a large portion of the ride's show building located outside of the park. You might also remember that another Disney attraction did the same thing a few years later, that being the Haunted Mansion. Not too long after that, work began on some of the actual figures that were going to be used on the ride. The animatronic technology was being tweaked and optimized, the pirates themselves began to be built and their faces sculpted, including some of the animatronic animals, and all of the characters were given their own custom clothing. By 1965, all the planning for what they dubbed the Blue Bayou Lagoon attraction had just about wrapped up, with all the ride scenes laid out and models of them created. And then in here, we have a special attraction. We call it the... Uh... Blue Bayou Lagoon. People are going to have to get on a boat here and ride through the lagoon. And then as they get around here, we're going to take them down a waterfall and take them back into the past, into the days of the, the pirates, you know, where they, the whole Caribbean area was full of pirates and they were always sacking towns and things. Shortly after that, construction began on the attraction itself, starting with its facade, then its show building, followed by the track, and then finally the ride scenes. However, since this was the first time Imagineering had ever made a large-scale, animatronic, heavy dark ride like this, construction took quite a while, as they were constantly tweaking elements of the attraction to help with things like the props and sets, the overall pacing, and character dialogue. 
They also made a last minute change in the ride's name, from the original Blue Bayou Lagoon to the now famous Pirates of the Caribbean. But after all that was finished, the attraction was finally ready to be opened. Now there's new fun and excitement waiting for you at Disneyland. The opening of the Magic Kingdom's most exciting new attraction, Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean was officially opened on March 18th of 1967. When the attraction was first opened, the crowds for it were quite large, and only managed to get bigger as word got out just how impressive the ride actually was. Something to keep in mind is that audio animatronics were a brand new thing at the time, and even though they were present at the World's Fair about three years earlier, this was the first time most people were able to see them in person. The ride continued to impress its guests for decades after its opening, still being one of the most popular attractions at Disneyland today, more than 50 years later. However, the ride's popularity still couldn't save it from seeing quite a few changes over the years, so let's talk about what revisions the ride has seen. For many years, Pirates operated almost exactly as it did on opening day. Prior to the late 90s, the ride itself really didn't see any noteworthy changes, aside from a few technological improvements or some slight visual changes when it came to a couple of the characters. The first actually noticeable change came in the form of a new queue in 1987. One of the biggest problems with the original queue was that it not only filled up way too quickly because of its small size, but also that its overflow went out into the square itself, and would often cause massive traffic jams in the area. The new queue extended the original line, and added a bridge on top of it that allowed people to pass over that part of the square without having to go around the people waiting in line. The next change came about a decade later in 1997, when Disney changed some of the ride's actual scenes. Due to increasing complaints from certain guests, there were a few changes made to the chase scene, where pirates could originally be seen chasing around the women of the town. This was later changed to now show the pirates chasing women holding various different foods, now putting the pirates' focus on the food rather than the women themselves. Along with that, one of the pirates in that scene was also recast and given some new dialogue to match the whole pirates chasing food aspect of it. Initially dubbed the Pooped Pirate, his story was that he was tired from chasing around one of the ladies, who was now hiding in a barrel behind him. He was then turned into the Gluttonous Pirate in 97, who was now a lot more focused on getting something to eat. The woman in the barrel behind him was also removed and replaced by a cat. Aside from that relatively small change, the ride remained mostly untouched. That was until 2006, when the attraction was slated to get a major overhaul. In 2003, Disney released Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, a movie loosely based on the original ride, but with plenty of new settings and characters. Much like the attraction, the movie was wildly successful, and subsequently spawned multiple sequels over the next couple of years. With the success of the first Pirates film, Disney was now looking for a way they could tie the movie in with the ride, which they eventually did by adding a few of the characters from the film. That included people like Captain Jack Sparrow, Barbosa, and Davy Jones. So, with that being said, let's talk about all the changes the 2006 revamp brought about. The addition of characters from the movies really had a big impact on the ride's storyline, effectively altering the entire thing. Now instead of the pirates just attacking the town for its rum, loot, and other valuables, the town is now being attacked by Captain Barbosa and his men, who are looking for Jack Sparrow, while Jack, on the other hand, is looking for the town's treasure. The ride's new storyline was accomplished by repurposing a few of the pre-existing animatronics, adding a couple new ones, and creating a whole new end scene, so let's delve into that a little bit further. The first new pirate you come across is Barbosa, attacking a fort from his ship, the Wicked Wench. The Barbosa animatronic is actually just a regular pirate from the original ride that was redesigned and given some new dialogue. Barbosa was also updated in 2015 to now have on his privateer outfit. Next up is the first scene in the town itself, where some of the pirates are dunking the mayor in the well to find out where the town's treasure is. The dialogue in this scene was also changed, so the pirates were now asking for the whereabouts of Jack Sparrow. I should also note that the first of the Jack Sparrow animatronics can be seen here as well, hiding behind some dresses from the pirates who were after him. Unlike Barbosa, all three of the Jack animatronics are brand new and didn't replace any other characters. The next time we see Jack is at the chase scene. Like I mentioned earlier, this scene saw its first set of changes in the late 90s. However, it did get altered again in 2006, when all four of the rotating pirates were all changed and so was the gluttonous pirate. Each of the rotating pirates were now doing something different, like stealing some treasure or getting chased by a woman with a weapon. As for the gluttonous pirate, he's now busy talking about his map to the town's treasure room and the key he has to open it. This is also where we see our second instance of Captain Jack, who's now hiding in a barrel behind him. 
This of course leads us to our final chance to see Jack, celebrating his newfound riches in the treasure room. Surprisingly enough, the treasure room is actually an entirely new scene from the 2006 refurb. Up until that point, the room was just filled with a bunch of drunk pirates shooting off guns at explosive barrels in the middle of the burning building. For whatever reason, one of the drunk pirates was removed from this portion of the ride in the late 90s, and is thought by many to have actually been relocated to the chase scene, where another pirate can be seen with almost the exact same movements. The actual reason that pirate was moved was so Disney could better showcase a new addition they had recently added behind him, that being two new figures who were trying to take a treasure chest back up the lift hill, and a set of skeletons behind them who seemed to have died doing the same thing. That of course was later removed in 2006, and replaced by the treasure room where we see Jack as we go back up the lift. And finally, the lift that brings us back up to the park's ground level also brings us our last new addition, that being some lines of dialogue from Davy Jones. This element is very similar to a different effect that was added towards the beginning of the ride in the refurb, where you can see a misty projection of Davy Jones in what was previously just a dark cavern. That effect was later changed again in 2011 when they added Blackbeard to this portion as well, who would alternate with Davy Jones. However, the effect was removed altogether in 2018, when Disney brought back the original ghostly dialogue from the cavern and added a new effect where you could see an octopus and the remains of a pirate caught in a booby trap, who will then turn back into a person as you pass by him. Lastly, in June of 2018, the original auction scene was modified so that the pirates were no longer buying the town's women, and were now instead buying other miscellaneous items, like paintings and clocks, because I guess pirates are a lot more interested in fancy chandeliers than women, you know, I mean, who would have guessed? They also changed the redhead animatronic from that scene as well, and replaced her with a new female pirate who's also auctioning off the town's items. And really, that's about it for all the changes the ride has seen over the years. I should also mention that over time, it has been upgraded in many different ways, so the ride's technology doesn't seem so dated. That includes things like the overall look of the animatronics and the scene lighting. On top of that, they've also managed to add projections to a few areas in the ride as well, and updated some of the older effects too, like the flames and burnt wood, so it all looks a lot more realistic. At the end of the day, Pirates of the Caribbean is one of Disney's most entertaining and memorable dark rides. Only in a ride like Pirates can you have so many iconic characters that even the average guest will likely have their own favorite. On top of being a timeless classic, the ride's history really showcases some monumentous advancements when it came to Disney attractions, with all the new types of technologies being debuted with it. The ride also managed to show how a bunch of different people with different skill sets could come together and create an experience that guests would really enjoy, with people like Mark Davis doing the drawings, Blaine Gibson sculpting the figures, Claude Coates designing the sets, and Exitensio writing the music and dialogue. Hopefully at this point, Pirates has secured its spot as an attraction that won't go anywhere anytime soon, and if it does see any more updates in the future, hopefully they'll only add to the original sense of fun and adventure that the ride brought us.